First of all, thanks for your interest, and thanks for uh, coming this morning to hear about Blackboard. And I am going to take a little bit of a risk this morning. I'm not going to talk about the education community, a broad vision for education. Uh, I'm not going to talk about what's happening with the world of the learner and how technology has impacted their expectations and what they want to see out of experiences and their relationships with institutions. There have been a lot of people that have talked about that at this conference. I'm going to talk about Blackboard. And so if you're not interested in Blackboard, please leave now. It'll be a lot less disruptive than if you left later in the presentation. But the reason I'm going to talk about Blackboard is, first of all, this is such a unique gathering of partners, potential partners, uh, clients of ours. And in the meetings that I have here, uh, as well as individually with clients and partners, it's the first question that I get. What's going on at Blackboard? What's happening at the company? What are you thinking about? And what's the direction of the company? So I thought I'd start with that topic and focus in on first the opportunity that we see, which really is a unique opportunity given our history, given our global footprint, our portfolio, and our ability to innovate. And it's not just an opportunity for us in bringing our technology into that footprint, it's an opportunity for our partners. And it's definitely an untapped opportunity when I take a big step back. So I want to talk about that. I, I want to talk about it in the context of our journey as a company celebrating our 20th anniversary this year. And then most importantly, I want to share our focus going forward and what we're doing within the company. And in fact, it'll probably be a little bit of inside baseball and under the hood, and it might get a little bit uh, detailed and into minutia, but to just give you a firsthand sense for what we're thinking about within the company and he, how we can maximize the potential of our value proposition. Now, I also thought this might be an interesting bookend to the Monday conversation with Michael Chasen and Matt Patinsky, are either one of them here? I th thought I saw Matt. Matt's here. Welcome. Thanks for, thanks for being here, Matt. Now, I was a little bummed out that I didn't get invited to participate in the uh, conversation on the first 20 years. But then as I reflected on it, I've been with the company for about a year and a half. So obviously, my contributions haven't been significant enough in that period of time to be invited to that presentation. So my goal is that 20 years from now, the three of us get invited back to talk about the first 40 years. Uh, I think that would be a lot of fun. Actually, my goal is to make it through the next 20 years, uh, but hopefully the three of us can come back and do that. So let me get started with uh, first just putting the opportunity into perspective and, and do that in the context of the profile of the company. And you can see the numbers here. In, even to, to me and to our team, they're a little bit staggering in terms of what they represent from an opportunity perspective to make a difference in the education community. So we're with a leading provider of software products across the education space. We have si over 16,000 clients in almost 100 different countries. And to us, what I think is most representative of the opportunity is 100 million users around the globe touching our systems. Our footprint today is about 26, 27% outside of the US and growing and expanding every day. That happens to be the fastest growing part of our business. So those numbers right there really represent the opportunity in front of us. And again, when I say us, I don't just mean Blackboard, but when we close our eyes and think about us bringing innovation and technology and putting it into the hands of 100 million users that are touching our system, Yes, that includes our technology and our broad par portfolio, but it includes our partners and working with our partners to bring the benefits of their technology into that footprint to make a difference in the world of education. I know that this opportunity is what gets our employees up out of bed every day and makes them excited about working at Blackboard. They don't give a rat's ass about order sales, profit, and cash. They care about making a difference in the world of education. I know when I talk to employees that we've that came through companies we acquired over time, one of the things that they found exciting about being part of Blackboard was the opportunity to make a bigger difference by being part of a company that has access to this kind of footprint. When I talk to our partners, that's what gets them excited about working for us, the ability to make a difference in this kind of footprint. And one partnership 
that we announced over the last year that we're really excited about because I think it brings two global leaders together to really focus in on this opportunity is our strategic relationship with Watson. Where, and in fact, Katie will be talking about that later today, where we're really excited about bringing our system of engagement, their system of insight with Watson together to look at the huge data sets that are relevant within this footprint and we have access to, to do some very new and innovative things in the world of education and bring it into our footprint globally. I know for me as an aerospace engineer, this is why I came to Blackboard. I'm, I, I didn't grow up in the education space. I grew up as an aerospace engineer, but was motivated every day to get the benefits of technology and aerospace solutions into the hands of people around the globe to make a difference in their world. And that's what makes us excited every day. Now, we didn't get there overnight, and Matt and Michael talked about <clears throat> the journey of the company throughout the first 20 years, but it has been that journey that's resulted in a unique footprint, a unique portfolio, and a very distinct capacity to innovate and bring new ideas and concepts into that footprint. And you can see the, 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 a summary of the journey of the company that started with the founding in 1997, uh, really driving the market, innovating, growing, leading to an IPO in 2004, and then for the last 10 years, a history that I think is best summarized by very active M&A. Uh, two dozen acquisitions of wonderful companies and technologies, and most importantly, talent that we brought into the portfolio, including uh, a go private transaction with uh, Providence in 2011. <coughs> Couple thoughts that I have on, on this journey. One is, the way we got here was distinct. You know, a series of acquisitions over 10 years, and I credit the founders and I credit Providence for having the capacity and the insight and the resources in order to do it. That's a very difficult thing to replicate. Also, when I think about the path forward, it looks very different than the path looking backward. The next phase of our journey will not look like the prior 10 years, and it's not that we won't be interested in making acquisitions, we, we will. But our focus within the company right now, if I were to characterize it, would be 99.9% .9 on tuning the organic engine of the company. And what I mean by that is the strategy and the structure and the systems that are required to take the portfolio that we have, innovate within that portfolio, innovate across the portfolio, bring new concepts to market, and make those accessible to our global footprint. That requires a totally different set of strategies, structure, systems, and even culture within the company than a company that really in a holding company mode is acquiring technology and businesses over time. And if you've been associated with Blackboard or partnered with Blackboard over time, I think that distinction uh, will be really clear. The last comment I'll make about the journey is it's nice to be in a private setting. And we won't always be in a private setting or we won't always be owned by Providence Equity Partners that owns the company today. But I've run companies that have been publicly traded. I've run privately traded companies. And I will tell you the benefit of being private for us allows us to focus, to keep things really simple. And our conversations are not at all associated with quarterly earnings, sales, profit, cash, when we're going to break even when we're going to be cash flow neutral. We never talk about that. We have one group of investors, we're aligned with those investors, and our focus is really simple and clear, and that's realize our potential in maximizing the impact that we can have on our clients, balance the tension between the lens of our clients, employees, and our owners, and the good news is those overlap. If we're satisfying our clients, we're growing our business, creating a great environment for our, our employees and our owners are going to be really excited about that. So it really just lets us focus and keep things simple on building value for our clients and making a difference for the community over the long run. Everything else will take care of itself. So it's just a perspective on our journey that if you're not inside the company and are part of our conversation, you just might not have an appreciation for the way that we're thinking about things. But it does start every day with making that difference on our clients. So let, let me get into 
talking about the path forward and us realizing the potential of our value proposition that really starts with this broad and deep portfolio, our ability to innovate in the portfolio and add to the portfolio, and then taking a big step back and talking about the fundamentals that we need to be great at so that we can deliver for our clients. So it starts with this portfolio of solutions. And just in conversations over the last couple days with partners and with clients, I've gotten the reaction, oh, I didn't know Blackboard did that. And so what I thought I'd do is just describe this is what we do. And we think about the products and the solutions that we bring to our clients in really four distinct buckets. The first on the left-hand side is teaching and learning. Now, for those of you who think about Blackboard as an LMS company, and we're much more than an LMS company, those products and capabilities are really embedded in this left-hand side of the chart. So it's our learn products, it's our collaboration tools, and it's our mobile products that are really persona-based around BB Student and BB Instructor to drive the learning experience. The second major bucket is our community engagement solutions that bring students and faculty uh, uh, and parents together to really focus on and drive student success. Those are mobile communication apps, their web community manager apps, social media managers, uh, mass notifications. The third set of solutions is really about driving student success throughout the student's uh, life cycle from enrollment to graduation and placement. And those look like enrollment and retention services, student account and financial aid services, planning capabilities for students, predict capabilities for teachers to look at opportunities to intervene and actually drive outcomes, and predict capabilities for advisors to identify when best to engage with students to try and affect outcomes. And then the fourth major bucket is around enablement solutions, campus and safety solutions, where we provide card solutions for security, for transaction, for point of sale, financial aid solutions, college store solutions, and attendance and event solutions. And this, this part of the business actually has been a rapidly growing part of our footprint and over the last year has more than doubled in size. And it now represents close to a third of our business. So if you think about the size of our business being roughly three quarters of a billion in revenue a year, that's about a third of, a, third of it and it's rapidly, uh, rapidly growing. Now as I think about this portfolio, a couple thoughts come to mind. First, it is broad and deep. And we think that's important because our clients have a broad range of challenges that they're trying to work through. And we don't believe that there's a one size fits all solution that's available. Secondly, it allows us to engage with our clients in a very different way. When I walk into a, a, a client meeting to meet with the leadership of an institution, for example, I am not there to push a product. The conversation starts with what's keeping you up at night what are your hard challenges? What are your top priorities? And then we figure out how to best engage from there and drive value from there. And because we can take that approach and because of the breadth of our portfolio, what we find is that over time, our engagements tend to get deeper and broader and stickier. And we can do that because of the nature of our portfolio, not only what you see in front of you, but what we're able to bring to our clients that our partners can offer as well. And I think the best proof points <coughs> of not only the distinctiveness of our portfolio, but its relevance, are these measures that we track very carefully, which are first on the left-hand side of the chart, the number of products or solutions that we have per client. And that is steadily growing with time. And to be very candid about it, this isn't something that we're really great at yet. And it's part of how we're building the capability within the organization from a holding company to a company that can bring the full value of our portfolio to our clients. We're getting better at this with time and as we get better, we'll see the adoption of products per client start to accelerate. What's even more interesting is as our relationships grow with our clients, they get stickier. And this is probably the worst example, but I thought I'd start here in our toughest market. When I think about our global market, our most competitive market has been in the North America higher ed space, focused in on that chart of four buckets. I'm gonna focus into a subset on the left-hand side, the LMS market in North America. By far has been our most competitive and we're actually excited about how we're trending in that and the things that we've done over the last 18 months. But if you just look at the stickiness in our most competitive market, as we look at our clients that have more than one product in addition to our learn product, 
our retention rates approach 95 and 100 percent, which points to the stickiness, the depth and breadth of our relationships, and I think some positive trends over time that we're working to drive. The second key piece of that value proposition is how we innovate across our portfolio over time. And I say across our portfolio, it really takes three different forms. Innovating within each of our products, innovating in how those products work together, and innovating in new products that we bring to that portfolio. Now, we have unique opportunities in this area because of the portfolio that we have. We also have some unique challenges. I mean, we have 700 developers around the company, and we're actually adding to that number as we're tripling uh, the output velocity on Ultra over the next six months. We have to make decisions that other companies don't have to make around investing in our products, how we allocate those investments, what we shut down, what we scale up. So there's definitely complexity that we have to deal with, but a huge opportunity. Also, when it comes to innovation, and what's different about our ability, first, we can innovate anywhere around our portfolio because of the breadth. Second, and I alluded to it, our capacity is different. We have a scale, we have a set of resources that we can put into innovation that we think is pretty distinct in, in the industry. And then third, because of 16,000 clients in 100 different countries and 100 million users, we have incredible insight into data and data sets that we use in a very real way to drive innovation into our products, into various releases, and around our portfolio. I listed some examples of recent innovations, and some of these are as recent as yesterday. And if you had a chance to read our blog on our latest Learn release and are interested in it, I would encourage you to do so because it does, with total transparency, talk about our strategy of investment in this area and some great technology that we brought to market including SaaS for, as an option for our self-hosted and managed hosted clients, including Ultra and the rollout of new features and functions that we've delivered just in this latest release. But I think most interestingly is the one at the top with Ally, which is a, a very unique technology that we've now brought to the market that allows institutions to actually assess their course material for accessibility, score it so they can see how they're doing, recommend new formats and actually change automatically formats to make content more accessible and available to students uh, in their institutions. We have a couple that are on the chart that I won't mention in the interest of time, but I think you get the gist of our ability to innovate within our portfolio, how our products are working together, and uh, bringing new products to our portfolio. The last thing that I, I just want to touch on in the last five minutes is getting back to this picture of the journey that the company is on and how our focus looking forward is very different from our focus looking backwards. As you think about a company that starts in 1997 and then builds itself up through acquisitions and now is looking at realizing the potential of that broad portfolio, integrating across it, how we innovate in that portfolio and how we bring the benefits of that innovation to a very broad global footprint it's very different. The strategy looks different, the structure and the systems need to look different, and the team and the culture needs to look different. And we've really zeroed in as a leadership team. We have broad conversations around this. From a structure and system standpoint to three areas where we have to have complete operational excellence, and we're driving it into everything that we do around first, our products, and making sure that we innovate develop and deliver products in a reliable way, in a transparent way, in a way that meets the needs of our clients. How we support all of those products so that our clients experience with every one of our products from the time that they sign the contract till the time that they renew is absolutely outstanding. And then in the effectiveness of our team, we don't have teams that are out meeting with clients that are pushing individual products. When we acquired companies, that's what the teams look like. But today, we have teams that go out and engage with clients, understand their hard problems, and then figure out how to bring the breadth of our portfolio to solve those problems. It's a totally different challenge. And so we've had to really retool our teams, turn over our teams, train our teams so that they can engage in that conversation and we can realize the true value of our, our value proposition. Because we know that we can talk about bringing the breadth of our portfolio to our clients and innovating for them 
But if we're not great at these fundamentals, we're not going to have the potential to have a great relationship with them. If they're not satisfied with our product and their experience and our teams that engage with them, we'll never have a chance to realize that potential. So we realize that meeting that potential starts here with a focus on the fundamentals. The last thing I'll touch on is the shift in culture of the company. And I know in talking about the culture of a company, there's probably a distribution in the room of how people react to that term. And I, I know that it can be associated with something that's touchy, feely, soft, and ambiguous. So I'll just give you some insight into how we're thinking about it. The culture of the company is about as hard of a topic as you can get to, and here's why. We know that our value proposition to our clients isn't based on our opinion. It's based on results. If they're satisfied with our products, if we're making a difference in their institutions and with their learners, if their experience with us is off the charts and customer satisfaction is high and if our retention is high, those are the hard results that demonstrate that either our value is there or it's not there. It's all about hard results, but we know that it's people and teams that do the work that generate those hard results, and it's the culture of a company that sets the context for people and teams to either be their best on one end of the spectrum or to be their worst on the other end of the spectrum. And so we're focused within the company on trying to build a culture that's based on and rooted on values that we know represent the kind of partner our clients want to work with. Values like integrity, excellence, innovation, and accountability, and a set of mindsets that allow us to work together as an integrated team to bring the best of the company to our clients. So I'll stop there in the interest of time. I hope that was a little bit informative in terms of where we are today, how we think about the opportunity that's in front of us, and the tangible way, not through hand waving, but the tangible way that we're really trying to focus on tuning the organic engine of the company so that we can realize the value proposition and make the biggest difference along with our partners in the education community. It's an opportunity that we see every day and our focus is on making that come to life. So thank you for your time today. I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. <laughs>